So I've heard from a lot of you that you want to get into shortcuts, but you don't know where to start. So that's what this video and well, the series of videos is going to be. So this is Shortcuts 101. This video is gonna be all about the basics of the app and building your first shortcut. After this video, we'll go into more moderate and advanced stuff in subsequent videos. If you have any shortcuts you would like to see built, let me know in the comments. Not everything is possible through shortcuts, uh, but if it is possible and it kind of fits the theme of these videos, I would love to use it as a tutorial for them. So the first thing we should talk about is the Shortcuts app. Uh, the Shortcuts is right here on my iPad. If you've deleted it in the past, you can just go into the App Store and re-download it. Just search for Shortcuts. Shortcuts works on the iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch, but the only place that you can make Shortcuts automations is on the iPad and iPhone. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the Shortcuts app, and you can see right here, this is the Shortcuts library. This is where all my Shortcuts live. And now a Shortcut, can be something really simple or it could be something really complex, but basically it is an automation utility. It's something we can run that does a set of tasks for us automatically. So let's go ahead and just take a look at one of them. One of the ones I use a lot is the new draft shortcut. I'm gonna hit that button right here. And it's pretty simple. All it does is ask for text and then it has a prompt for the draft name and then it creates a draft in my inbox workspace. So it's, it's pretty straightforward, and we're going to make something kind of similar to this, but a little more complex that could do a little bit more today. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the My Shortcuts section. So like I was saying, this is my library. Um, these are the folders. You won't have anything like this when you first open up Shortcuts. You'll have what's called the Starter Shortcuts, and there'll probably be about three or four shortcuts in here uh, that you can kind of play with and, and check out. But what I usually recommend to people when they're first starting off with Shortcuts is to come up here to the gallery option. Now, what the gallery has is a list of shortcuts that you could basically download for free and just try out. And usually what I tell people is find some shortcuts that look interesting to you, download them, and tear them apart. See, what, see how they tick and kind of understand what each action does. So let's go through this section here really quick. So first up, there's this gallery banner area. And the first option is the starter shortcuts. I highly recommend starting here. Uh, there's some interesting things in here. There's some complex ones. There's some easy ones. Um, it, it's kind of a good place to, well, start. Then there's shortcuts for your apps. These are just one action shortcuts that work with the apps you have installed on your device. So they're much more personalized. Then these are pre-made shortcuts from Apple and back in the days when shortcuts used to be a another app called Workflow. Um, these are all from there. You can play with these. So we're gonna go ahead and pick a shortcut to kind of work with here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the set weekend chores one. And you can kind of see here, we get this card. It gives us a little description of what's going on. And then it says do, and then it says five actions. If we tap on this, each one of these blocks is an action. And an action is what makes up a shortcut. It's kind of what we tell a shortcut to do. So this one has, uh, basically it gets has a list and then we could choose from that list. And then it's gonna repeat with each item in the list, adding it to the reminder. So we could select multiples of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit back here really quick. And I'm gonna hit add shortcut. Some shortcuts, when you import them for the first time, like pre-made shortcuts, not ones that we'll make from scratch, will have these kind of questions like this that will ask us to configure the shortcut in some way. So this one's asking us what reminder list we want to use. I'm just going to leave it on inbox, but you could tap in here and pick something else. Okay, so let's go back to all shortcuts here. And we're going to go into set weekend chores. So to edit the shortcut, we're going to hit the three dot menu button. And right here, you can see we have our shortcut. Uh, if you ever see anything like this, that just means you have to allow access for shortcuts to access whatever app. Uh, in this case, it's reminder, so we'll hit allow access and hit OK. So now if we were to run the shortcut right here, and to run a shortcut, you just tap this run button right up here, or on the screen, you could just click on it. We get this menu right here, and we can select a couple of different options in here and hit done what time should it be uh we'll say 8 a.m done okay so let's go into reminders here and you can see here 
it added all those tasks that we just added from that shortcut to the inbox. We didn't have to manually type those out. They're consistent. They have reminders. Great. But what if we want to make our own shortcut? Something a little more personalized, something specifically for us. Well, to do that, we hit this plus button right up here at the top. And the shortcut I'm going to make this time is creating a new note using the Notes app. It's, it's a pretty straightforward one, and it's going to be a good example to kind of teach you guys the basics of shortcuts. So right over here is the sidebar for shortcuts. This is where all of our actions live. Here's some suggestion ones based on how you use your iPad or iPhone. Uh, but right up here is where all the actions live. Since we're building a shortcut to create a new note, we could just go into Apps, Notes, then grab any of the actions we want from here. But instead, I personally like to use Search. So I'm just going to type in Note right here. And as you can see, it came up with a few options right here. There's some uh, bear options, some Evernote options, uh, notes options, a few few things in here. Uh, this is because there are third-party apps built into shortcuts, and these are kind of legacy actions, so I don't have Evernote installed on this iPad. These are legacy actions that just kind of got carried over. So if you see those there, that's just what they are. Like, if you see actions there from uh, apps you don't have installed, that's what they are there for. They're just legacy um actions you don't have to use them um, but once you start installing third-party apps you'll see more specific actions show up for those if they support shortcuts but the action we want is actually right here it's create note so there's two ways you can add an action you can just click on it and it's going to automatically add it to the bottom or you could just drag and drop it and then you can put it anywhere you want so we can put it at the bottom or we can move it up here to the top I'm going to go ahead and delete this one because we don't need it twice. So the way this works is create note with body. So if we just typed um, testing in here, uh, it would create this note. So basically, we'll, let's just run this really, really quick. So it shows that it's going to save this, where this is going to save the note to, and it's going to show the contents of it. So we'll just hit save, and then we can pull up notes here. And there's testing. All right, so let's go back into shortcuts. But it did a few things that we don't really want it to do. First off, we want to be able to provide the input for what the note needs to be. Also, we got that compose sheet. So if you come in here to the show more area, this is where the options of the actions are. So we could turn off the show compose sheet, and then we get this in folder option. So we could come in here and specify a folder. I'm just going to go ahead and pick the notes folder. And then we're going to come over here where it says create note with testing. We're going to go ahead and delete testing. Now we have these options down here. These are where all of your variables live. Uh, right now we don't have any other actions, so we can't pull a variable from another action. We'll do that in a bit. But for right now, we want it to ask us each time we run the shortcut what the new note will contain. So we're going to tap on this ask each time action. So now if we were to run this, uh, we can create note with text in notes. So let's go ahead and run it. We'll say testing two and then hit done. So now we can come over here into notes. We have our testing two note. The one issue is, well, it's just making all the text the header. What if we wanted to add multiple things underneath it? Well, in that case, we would need to use a second action. We're going to need to use ask for input. So we could come over here, and it's in scripting. I know this, but uh, I, again, like to use search. So we'll just type in ask, and right here is the action we want. So we want ask for input, so we're going to drag it right above that. So what it's going to do is it's going to ask for text. And we could change this if we want, but text is what we want. If you tap on it, there's a few things you could do with it, numbers, URL, date and time, things like that. And then there's a prompt, so it's going to ask us for a question. So we'll just type in note question mark. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. We know what this is going to be. Okay, but these two actions are not connected. We have It's going to ask us for text, but then, again, this note has another ask each time option. So we need to tap on this right here, and then you're going to hit this keyboard button right here, and then just delete that. So now it's blank. 
And what we need to do is we need to set the variable. So this blank grayed out ghost spot right here is called a parameter. And with parameters, you could set data or set variable. So variables are data that can be pulled from different actions. In this case, it's going to be this action right here. And it could be, it could change based on different criteria. It'll make more sense once we go through this, I promise. What, what we want is we could do a couple of things right here. We could just hit this provided input shortcut right here. So in this variable bar right here, it will change dynamically based on where you are in your shortcut and what actions are there. Um, we could just hit this provided input and that would link it to that, but we're gonna hit delete. What we are gonna do is we're gonna use the magic wand. So right here, there's this wand icon. We're gonna hit that. And this is the magic variable view. So if we had multiple actions right here, we could pick from different actions to select a magic variable. And what we want really is just to tap on the provided input. So now that takes the provided input from this action and creates a new note with it. So let's just go ahead and run it. We're gonna call this testing three. Now in shortcuts to do a line break, you have to hold down shift and hit return. Uh, if you just hit return on its own, it will uh, hit basically like, it'd be basically like you were hitting done. So uh, we're gonna say, hello world. And then we're gonna hit done. And then we'll go into notes. So we have the header is the first line. And then after that, it's just regular text. So let's go back to shortcuts. So this is pretty simple, pretty straightforward shortcut, but what if we wanted to have another input? What if we didn't wanna always have to manually write text? What if we wanted to get stuff from our clipboard? So let's come over here into search and type in menu. And then we're gonna drag a menu to the top. Now a menu is an interesting scripting action. Basically when shortcuts gets to a menu action, you get a prompt. So we are, we're gonna pick, um, how to create a new note. Not the most elegant way of phrasing that, but that's okay. Then there's these headers down here. So we're gonna change the one right here. We're gonna delete one and we're gonna type in um, writing. Then what we can do is drag these actions in right underneath writing, but just like how they were, uh, they were lined up before. So we have the ask for input and create note. So if we were to run this, it would give us a menu. We could pick writing and then it would run these actions only. Once it got to us, once it got to the next header, it would stop and then go to what's underneath the end menu option. So if we had like another action after end menu, it would just go to that. But what we want is delete two and we're going to do clipboard. So we're going to create a note from whatever is on our clipboard. So let's come over here again to search and we're gonna type in get clipboard. And we're gonna add that right there. And then again, we're gonna go uh, come up here. We're gonna do create note and we want that action right there. Now, what you can see right here is it automatically filled in the parameter with the variable right above it. So since we kind of built this in more of a linear order this time, as opposed to last time where we did the note first and then moved the ask for input above it, we did this in a linear order. So it knew that, hey, the get clipboard action does have data on it. And hey, we can take that data and do something with it. So let's just automatically add that variable in there. If we didn't want to use the get clipboard action, we could just delete it if we wanted to. And then we could come over here to the magic variable button and pick something else. But we do want that. So I'm going to delete that. And instead of going into the variable, I'm just going to hit clipboard right there. It does the same thing. It's just kind of a nice shortcut. Okay, so before we run this, we need to go into show more and turn off show compose sheet. Now it filled in a folder, but we could tap on that and pick out a different folder in here. So there's all the folders I have in notes, but there's also a few other options. We could pick select magic variable if we wanted to pull data from another action and use that as the folder name, or we could use this ask each time option right here. And that's what I'm gonna pick. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this now. We're gonna hit clipboard and I'm just gonna put it in scripts. Even though it's not a script, I'm just gonna put it in scripts. 
So let's go into notes, scripts, hello world, right there. So that made it from our clipboard. We didn't have to type in any input or anything like that. Let's go ahead and go back into our shortcut here. So that's building a shortcut right there. But how do you save it and where do you run it from? So let's go ahead and you can hit this three dot menu right up here. And we can just fill out the a shortcut name. So we'll new notes prompt. I have a shortcut called new notes and you can't have uh, two shortcuts named the same thing. So I'm just gonna call it new notes prompt for right now. We could add it to the home screen by just hitting add to home screen, fill out the name, new notes, hit add. We could also turn this on for the Apple Watch and Share Sheet. Though the Share Sheet wouldn't really do us any good for this shortcut because it's not bringing any data in from the Share Sheet. We'll talk about that in another video. We don't need any import questions or anything like that, so we're just gonna go ahead and hit done. So let's go back to my shortcuts. So right there, we have new notes prompt. If we wanted to run this, we could just tap on it, it would run it, but we also saved it to the home screen, so we could tap on that and it would launch it. Personally, the way that I think shortcuts is the most interesting to run is now with the new search feature on the iPad, we could just type new notes prompt, run that, and it'll run right up here in the notification which is really handy, which is really, really nice. I, I like the way uh, the new search works with shortcuts. But you could also add it via the widget. So if we come in here, hit the plus button, scroll all the way down, go to shortcuts, and right here we could do a single action shortcut. Uh, there's a few other ones. We're just going to do the single action shortcut and hit add widget. Hit done. So if we tap on this right here, it runs right in the notification up there. We can hit writing, typing on the home screen, and boom, done. So that's it. That's the basic shortcuts, how to build your first shortcut. That's it right there. Um, if you didn't want to build your shortcut, if you didn't want to build it along, I will put a link to the shortcut that you can download it in the description below. If you are downloading shortcuts for the first time, you will need to go into settings, shortcuts right here, and turn on allow untrusted shortcuts. You'll have to hit allow and then type in your passcode. So that's the basics of shortcuts right there. There's still a lot more you can do with it and there's gonna be a lot more we cover in future videos in this series. So be sure to subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.